if you ever get to scuba dive in the vast oceans you will get to know about another serene and silent world that lies just below the earth's surface as you can see here it's so beautiful isn't it now so just like we live on earth similarly there are creatures and plants that live within the oceans and that is called the marine life therefore marine life in the oceans seas and lakes include the animals the different creatures that live within the water and the plants as you can see here right now the ocean connects the continents so we know that besides roads and railways we have the sea routes and ocean routes that help us connect to different continents right also the presence of water on earth makes it a very unique planet right so almost 71% of the earth surface is covered with ocean water right now so can you help me answer this question what makes the earth so unique the presence of food or the presence of water the presence of animals or the presence of trees yes it is the presence of water that makes the earth a unique planet now there's a secret to how the oceans were formed right so it happened due to the breaking off of pangaea during the jurassic period that is 200 million years ago so pangaea was a super continent where all the continents together was one piece of land and it was surrounded by a big ocean that was the panthalesa eventually due to many tectonic movements these got divided and formed different oceans right so what do you see here in this picture say for example you happen to be in this particular ship on this big water body on this big ocean and somehow there is no more drinking water in your ship now what do you do now since there is so much water around you you can easily have it right no you cannot because all this water is saline okay there's a lot of salt in this water so it's not drinkable so as you can see here it is very ironic as there's water everywhere but there's not a drop to drink right so this is only because of the saline nature of the oceans and water bodies so what exactly is the reason behind the salinity of the water bodies like the oceans and seas basically these have a mixture of 96.5% of water along with 3.5% of salts now these salts again constitute different components like sulfate magnesium calcium potassium and other dissolved components right this is what makes the water saline in nature so as we know that about 70% of the earth surface is covered with ocean water right and it is divided into five parts right as you can see here it's 1 2 3 4 5 and they are divided according to their sizes so the first ocean is that is this pacific then we have the atlantic ocean then we have the indian ocean then we have the southern ocean and at last we have the arctic ocean so now let's learn about the first and the largest ocean of the world and that is the pacific ocean now where exactly is the pacific ocean let's locate it so as you can see here this is earth now if we zoom in we have the north pacific ocean and if we go a little down we have the south pacific ocean right right here so now if we zoom out again and we go to the right side of the pacific ocean what do we see we see the north america and the south america so now we know that on the 
eastern side or the right side of the Pacific Ocean, we have North America and South America. Now, on going towards the leftward side or the western side of the Pacific Ocean, what do we have? Well, let's see. So, on going to the left side, we have the largest continent of the world and that is Asia, right? And right towards the southwestern side, we have Australia. So, this is how we locate Pacific Ocean. So, now we know that on the right side, we have North America and South America. Well, on the left side, we have Asia and Australia, right? So, now that we have seen where exactly the Pacific Ocean lies, we know that the equator divides the earth into two equal halves, the northern hemisphere and the southern hemisphere, right? So, at the same time, it also divides the Pacific Ocean into the North Pacific Ocean and the South Pacific Ocean. So, now that we know that the Pacific Ocean is the largest ocean of the world, there are certain interesting facts that we need to remember. So, let's take a look at them individually, right? So, talking about the first point, airplanes usually do not fly over the Pacific Ocean. Why is it so? So, take for example, this is a place A and this is a place B, right? And I ask you to travel to this place with two routes. Both will lead you from A to B. Now, you tell me which will be shorter. Obviously, this one will be shorter than this one because it is straight while this is curved which will take you a longer time. But if you compare these two maps that is showing you a world map, what do you see? The airplane is crossing over the Pacific Ocean. Now you tell me which will take a shorter time. You may tell me that this will take a shorter time as you can see. But in reality, this is not the case. Why is it so? Well, we know that the maps are two dimensional and it can be misleading as we don't have the exact shape of the earth on maps, right? While in reality, the earth is three dimensional, it is spherical in shape. So, if the planes cross over such large oceans, it will take a very, very long time and it is usually advised to take curved coast of the continents that will take them a shorter time. And we also know that since the Pacific Ocean is the largest ocean, if there is an emergency and the plane has to land immediately. Now, since this is a vast ocean, it will be very difficult for the pilots to decide where to land, right? So, it is usually not advised to take this route, right? So, another factor is that in the Pacific Ocean, there is a chain of active volcanoes known as the Ring of Fire. It is believed that these volcanic eruptions lead to the formation of magnetic fields that may attract the plane and lead to drowning or it may cause major accidents. Another very interesting fact. Now, what is it? The deepest trench that is the Mariana Trench is present in the Pacific Ocean. Now, how deep it actually is? Let's see. So, you know that the Mount Everest is the highest peak in the world. So, if you place the Mount Everest on the seabed of the Pacific Ocean, you will understand that the sea level is still 2000 meters above the peak of Mount Everest. So, now you can imagine how deep the Mariana Trench is. Also, the deepest or the tip of Mariana Trench is also called the Challenger Deep, which is almost 11,000 meters below the sea level. So, today we learned how oceans were formed, right, from Panthalesa, that is the super ocean. It got divided into five oceans of the world that we have at present. And we also learned about the first and the largest ocean of the world, that is the Pacific Ocean. So, in the next video, we will learn about the other important oceans of the world. 
Don't forget to subscribe to our channel and hit the bell icon. You can also register for free at deltastep.com or download the Delta Step app to learn one to one with our amazing teachers or to get access to all our 5000 plus amazing videos as per your school syllabus. Master each topic with our adaptive practice technology. Get million plus questions with step by step solutions and unlimited mock test. Get all your doubts resolved instantly. Learn via games and win amazing prizes like PlayStations and iPads. So at Delta Step, learning is not just fun and easy, it is rewarding too. So register for free now.